and gentlemen, the three knockdown rule on Triller is in effect. I'm Steve Kim, joined by Senor Big Lot, Mario Lopez. See you all over the place inside there. You know what? I appreciate the moniker this week, Kim, because you've been slipping the last mm. couple of weeks. You know, we have a couple ladies present. All of a sudden, your game elevates. Mm. I like your style. <laughs> mm. Quick shout out to uh, Smoking uh, Tim Frazier over there, Buffalo Knuckles, and Tino, Tino on the edits. Um, yes, as you no mentioned, Later on, Sinicia Estrada, Unified Champion, will be joining us for a segment on this fine program. But let's get started. Round number one this past Saturday night from the Crypto.com Arena on the Zone. It was junior welterweight, which is a factor. Ryan mm. Garcia with the dominant six-round stoppage of Javier Fortuna, flooring him in rounds four, five, and six. So I got invited to play in the All-Star um, game here at uh, Dodger Stadium for All-Star Weekend, right? Major League Baseball. I'm saying this for a reason. And you know I love my Dodgers, and you know um, I would have been excited to play in that game. I played in it before. However, it fell the same night at the fight, and I gave you my word I was going to be at the fights. Where was I? The fights. At the fights. I didn't see you. Where were you, fool? Press row, doing my job. Oh, really? Hard. Were you actually working there? Yeah. Wow, look at you. I'm very proud of you, Kim. That's Kimster. what I do. That's what I do. Well, you know, it depends. It yeah. depends once in a while. But I did end up going. Uh, took the misses. We had a great time. It was a fun night. Fun night. I thought the 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 crowd was lively. And um, uh, we got there a little late because I was, I was working a little late. But obviously saw the last two fights in the main event. And listen... I'm I'm liking the development of uh, Ryan and the pairing with Joe Goosen. I thought he sat a little bit more on his punches. I would have liked him to to be meticulous. Like to him, like for him to have utilized his jab a little bit more. Um, still looks a little flat footed to me. Keeps that chin up still a little bit, but he's punching a little bit more in combinations once he started getting a little more comfortable in there. And he's got that quick check left hook, man. And um, I thought he was calculated. Not he didn't let the moment overwhelm him where when the crowd started to get a little bit excited, he didn't go in recklessly to try to finish him off. I thought he stayed disciplined, and I saw some improvement. Um, now, you mentioned junior welterweight, because I thought it was a huge factor going up to 140, because Fortuna, even though he's a former world champion, small guy. And he looked a little soft in there in the corner, too. So I thought just from a physicality standpoint, Ryan... Um, had a lot of the physical tools where he was going to be at a great advantage with the length, the reach, the height, obviously. Be that as it may, in the beginning, I thought Fortuna had some moments maybe getting inside and the little sort of sneaky looping overhand right was there uh, and he caught him, but he, he took it well. And then once he started to sort of establish his distance, he started to pick him off a little bit and he kept it fundamental and essentially didn't try to get too cute and basic in there. But that's all you need when you have that sort of speed and power. I thought he, I thought he looked good, and I thought he ended with an exclamation point. Now, again, uh, considering all things, um, and it was a step up from his last performance. So I think he's trending in the right direction. Now, look, I thought the highlight, of course, was with the post-fight stuff, where he's again being adamant about calling out Tank. I, I don't look. Logic tells you Tank right off the bat, right? I don't think it's such a gimme fight, to be honest with you, especially if it's at 140. He's long, he's tall, he's got those quick counter punches. I think I think the kind of fighter that gives Ryan problems are ones with, again, those kind of looping punches that are able to get on the inside. But Tank's not more of a counter puncher, and he likes when you sort of press him, and Ryan doesn't fight that way. And if he can, I think it's a, a lot more of a competitive fight. I'm not saying. He's going to beat him, but I think it's a lot more of a competitive fight, and I don't know if it's so easy for one Mr. Tank Davis. Am I wrong? Let me get into this. When Ryan Garcia's post-fight interview, thank God and his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I'm thinking, yeah, also throw in Robert Diaz. Thank him, too, because he's matched perfectly. And as it relates to Fortuna, what I like to call the Chris Rock, he fed his kids, he stayed out of jail, I got a job. In other words... You did what you're supposed to. Now, with that said, I'm actually impressed. I thought he made really significant strides in his second trip with Joe Goosen. Mm -hmm. Better jab. Thought the right hand was a little bit straighter down the middle. Showed some poise. And you're right. The reflexes and the quickness will always be an issue. He has that natural twitch. 
and reflexes you cannot coach. That is exactly. God given. And he, lo- I'm sorry to interrupt you, but he looks a lot better at 142. That's a factor. He's and a here's big, what I think: he's a, the speed doesn't look like it's slowed down a little bit. He looks like he's getting a little bit more of that man strength, and I think that tends to benefit him as opposed to Tank. Had well, to look, sure that fight happen. Oscar De La Hoya at 30 and 35 was really vulnerable in terms of his chin. He got decked twice early on in his career by Narciso Valenzuela. He also let his hands go a lot and more, And Giorgio Campanella. Suddenly, as he grew in weight, had a little bit more of his legs underneath him, yeah. he became a much more sturdy fighter. Turned out he actually had really good punch resistance. Could be the case for Ryan Garcia, but Fortuna, to me, really, look, his best days were at 26 and 30. Right. He was blown up. He was never going to be able to truly get inside and pressure him. Now, Ryan made it clear, I am a junior welterweight. I believe it's also very strategic, and this could be the ultimate roadblock for a potential fight with Tank Davis. I agree with you. Stylistically, in terms of stature, Ryan Garcia, in many ways, as you like to say, like Duke, he's all wrong for us, baby. Mm -hmm. Look at Mario Barrios. Many of the same physical features, but faster, quicker, and and more power. And he won large stretches of that fight. Not only that, Kim, Davis gets touched a lot. Whether it's, CO, whether it's Santa Cruz or even Raleigh Romero. My guy gets touched yeah. a lot. And if you're going to get touched by a kid with, with some uh, pop that Ryan has, that can be a problem for you. I'm just, I'm just saying, I, like I said, look, and then people like to call him an Instagram fiber to this and that. But the kid has a pretty impressive amateur record. I think he's like 215 and 15. That's that's He's got a lot of uh, pedigree. There, so he, he the kid knows how to fight. I think they just get annoyed and a little distracted by his antics on social media, and it sort of blinds everything else. But I say that he he's a lot more talented than people give him um, credit for. And and I ask you this: Has Tank fought anyone as dangerous as Garcia? Offensively, no. Okay. But with that said— no, Hold on a second. So that one-hitter quitter, which I think he has, is a huge factor. Okay, but let me stick up for uh, Gervonta Davis. He's a dog. Oh, I'm not I'm not, I'm not. not disrespecting tough. Gervonta at all. And he's, I, I like me Gervonta Davis. And he's physically yes. very sturdy. No, I know. And he's got legitimate power Absolutely. with both hands. Absolutely. And a lot of the consensus out there is that he's going to walk through Garcia. All I'm saying is I think it's a lot more competitive— than people think, and I think it could be a real shootout. That's all I'm saying. Now, everyone is that goes, fair? Do you agree with that? I think it's very fair. I think the gap is closed. A couple years ago, I called it Tiananmen yep. Square. Maybe it's not that much anymore. Bro, my guy's 5'10", 5'11", go, and then what's Tank? 5'5"? Five, 5'5 five? Five, five and a half on a good day. And now you actually look at the situation between Golden Boy promotions, Mayweather like he can't promotions. Easily re- he can't easily reach him. The more I think about it, he can't yeah. easily reach him into those counters. And you, and you know? have the zone, and you have the showtime. Yeah. And he also likes those pressure fighters and those smaller mm-hmm. fighters. No, and no, it's t- Tank be- struggles with pressure. And t- I'm telling you, this is an interesting fight. It'll actually <laughs> be a cat and mouse game. Which guy wants to get on his front foot and actually initiate the action, knowing that they are both more natural counter punchers? Mm. So th- it does become a much more tactical battle than people believe. But in terms of the politics of the business, I'll be honest. I think the Bloods and the Crips in the '80s got along better than Golden Boy Promotions and Mayweather. So listen. really, I don't see a deal being made here. And now the issue with the weight. I'm, I'm telling you right now, Golden Boy and the Ryan Garcia brain trust are thinking at 140, we have a significant physical advantage and we don't have to cut weight. If you're Leonard Ellerby and Floyd Mayweather, you're thinking, no, no, we got that big, tall kid. We want to bring him down to 35 and let him be weight drained. This could ultimately be what hampers this fight from be- being a reality. I don't think he can make 35 anymore. Mm. I, he's a big kid. I don't think he can and make growing. Th- that's what I'm saying. I don't think he can make 35. I don't think he it's not that he uh it doesn't want to go back for whatever. I just don't think I think he outgrew it. I think that that's it. That time has passed. He's young, he's growing, he's continuing to grow. And look, I had uh I haven't had dinner with Oscar after the fights and he I go, "Hey, so what's the deal, dude?" I said, "What is this? Are you really is it puro pelo? Is this is this going to happen or he's I'm gonna try." He's I'm going to try. He goes, I wanted to make it happen. He's all, he wants it. He goes, I got to make it happen. He goes, even if you were to lose, he goes, it'll, maybe it'll humble the kid. And maybe it'll, it'll break. But I think everyone wins in this case. And so there's enough to go around. So why not? I said, okay. So I was surprised. So, you know, he, so he's got a reason to lie to me. So Maybe they do a catch weight. Because I, I get the sense both fighters believe that they're bigger than the belts. They transcend world titles. Now, with that said, with Ryan Garcia, with all the statements he's made, 
If he ends up not making the Tank Davis fight, you know those tattoos he has with the crowns on his back? He ought to add an extra one of a blue cap emoji. Because at that point, it'd be all cap. And he once again, he'd be the boy who cried wolf Look at you with the lingo. As the kids would say, (laughs) all cap. With the teen lingo right there. Look, I, look. I, okay, let me ask you this. Who else does Tank fight where he can probably make that sort of money? Right now, it would no not one. be they Devin Haney. Have... It would not be Shakur Stevenson. That's what it I'm would saying. be Ryan Garcia. That's what I'm saying. So isn't it, if he's so confident that he can walk through this kid, then... Okay, well, let me flip it on you then. Okay. Name me a bigger fight for Ryan Garcia. Tank Davis is a draw. He has a pay-per-view track record. He, does he actually a... outdrew... Ryan Garcia in his own hometown for the Isaac Cruz fight. I yes, and he's so. been no he, he and he has been a lot more active. But I think Garcia has more upside, and I hmm. think he's trending in the right direction. And I think the kid, when you have sort of like that, regardless of what you think about him, you either love him or you love to hate him, or whatever. If you have that sort of star quality, you can build on that. Then it almost doesn't matter sometimes to the opponent. Hmm. So I think he has more upside, even though you're right. Tank has proven pay per view um, behind him, but I look. I think it benefits both of them from a financial standpoint and also a point in their career. If I'm Tank, I want that fight now. I don't want him to continue to get better, right? And I don't want him to continue to grow and 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 um, have a few more camps underneath him. I would take it next. Keep this in mind: Tank Davis is 27. Ryan Garcia is now 23. Moving on with the three knockdown rule on Triller. The night before, Pachanga Casino, Temecula, California on ESPN. Pair of interesting bouts. Junior welterweight contender Arnold Barboza pounds out a 10-round decision over Puerto Rican Daniel Zaria. And lightweight prospect Raymond Murataya with a solid eight-round verdict over Jer Altiera. Mario, Arnold Barboza... Last year, turned down a couple of fights. Top rank was not happy with them. But, you know, putting all of that aside, he's a good, solid top 10, 140 pounder. I don't understand when these guys turn down fights. You barely get the opportunity these days. You're going to start turning them down. Like, you, don't, you don't get paid unless you fight. So why are you yeah. not going to want to be more active? With that said, look, it was about a year, right, since he hasn't been? 11 months. So, like I said, about a year since he hasn't been in the ring. And... I thought it showed. He looked a little rusty. He got touched a little bit in the beginning and wasn't as smooth defensively. But it kind of made for an exciting fight. He started to get into kind of a dog fight and then started to get a little more comfortable um, around the fifth round and started to sit on his punches a little bit and and uh, obviously did what he needed to do to, to come away with the clear-cut victory. It's funny because I just realized him and Ryan Garcia both called out Teofimo Lopez at 140, assuming he couldn't make yeah. the fight with Tank Davis. And then Barboza was talking about wanting Teofimo. When did, like, Teofimo become... To me, Teofimo, the disrespect, I don't... Look, I, you know how I was high on Teofimo. Anyone that could beat Loma in their prime, especially by a decision, because it wasn't like he got him with a lucky punch, even though I don't really like that expression, or overwhelmed him or he caught him, right? He beat him in, in a competitive fight, but beat him decisively in a decision. That's a bad dude. Strong, quick... And he has a bad outing with uh, Cambosas, who he dropped, and it was still competitive. But all of a sudden, people are talking about him like he's a walk in the park. So I'm like, I, I, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see when he comes back right here if these dudes really want that smoke. Because I still think he's highly dangerous and is good. And he's one. We're talking about one going up. He's a big kid yeah. busting at the seam at 35s. I think he, we're going to see a stronger even a more dangerous Tiafimo coming up at uh, Junior Welter. With Tiafimo, it's, it's not physical. It's psychological. That, that's the key. If he's okay mentally, I think he's as dangerous and talented as any young fighter. I agree. Under the age of 24. As it relates to Arnold Barboza, he gets back in the victory column while remaining undefeated. He talked about ring rust and his outing on this Friday night. The office, I saw you getting iced. How do you feel right now? I feel good. Um, I didn't re- Actually, you know, I only got hit like more toward the end of the fight. It wasn't... Just cause I got careless, you know, when I got, I went back to like trying to <laughs> brawl, man. But uh, it was a good fight, man. You know, uh, it's been a while since I've been out of the ring. So, so this was a good fight, man. I want to be active more now. Sorry. You know, we talked you, about this about a few days ago, ring rust. Yeah. Was it a real thing for you? Yeah, it was actually, you know, but, uh, but um, you know, it was just getting acclimated back, you know, to a little blood. You're like, oh, you know, but, uh, but yeah, man, it, it, you know what? Uh, it's only getting better. Uh, it was a great experience um, and I hope to fight soon. What do you think you're going to do next, and how fast do you think you can return? Man, I'll return th- uh, this year. So for, I want to fight by the end of this year again. Um, so, uh, you know, we're going to talk to Bob, and, you know, uh, we'll be at the Teofimo fight. 
Yeah, and Mario, I would describe Barboza as being sound and sturdy. Not spectacular, main, not special. Makes for good fights. It's going to take a pretty good fighter to beat him. And Mario, Raymond Motataya, I like him. I think he's got great command and poise. Really good offensive arsenal. That's a 135-pounder to look for moving forward. I know Robert Garcia is very high on him. Yeah, look, Junior Welterweight's gotten exciting all of a sudden. Yeah. It's gotten really exciting. He'll be a junior welterweight soon. No, Just, exactly. Yeah. And then we know Josh Taylor's moving up. So I, hmm, I'm trying to think. So who's the cream of the crop right now? Well, I still, still like me some Cepeda. News on Cepeda coming up later because, look, that Josh Taylor performance, which let's be honest, it was awful. I thought he lost against Catterall. No, I know. So do I. So Catterall, by the way. There's another one, no, of no, course. No, but it, but it, it put like eight other junior welterweights who thought, okay, Taylor's going to win. He's going to move up. Everyone thought they were fighting for this vacant belt. It's like when you're on the freeway at the 405 at 430 and you're thinking, okay, why is why are a bunch of brake lights? Why is everyone? And there's this big 18-wheeler that's overturned holding yeah. up traffic. That was Taylor Catterall. I mean, all these guys like Regis Progre, another really good junior Walter. Right. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They're all kind of like, hey, guys, can you move up? S or get off the pot, as they say. Moving forward, Saturday from Hinkley, Minnesota, from the Grand Casino on ESPN+. Plus, We have a featherweight eliminator. Old contender, Joette Gonzalez, takes on Isaac Is My Dog Bay. Um, Joette Gonzalez, modern-day Obacar. Remember Obacar, really good welterweight? Of course. Never, never won, won the title. title. But look, he was good. De La Hoya. Tough era. Corte. Trinidad. Yeah. And I look at Obacar and think this guy was a top five welterweight Murder's in the row. worst era for him to be at. He fought in this era, he'd probably be a two, three time world champion. Yeah. I get the same sense about Joette Gonzalez. Think about this. Your first world title, you face the most difficult style in all of boxing, the invisible Shakur Stevenson. Mm -hmm. The guy is stealth, right? Okay. Then you fight Joette. Then he faces Emmanuel Navarrete, mm. who throws 1,500 punches at you from every single direction. So when people say it's easy to win a belt, hell no. I will respectfully disagree. Of course, never easy to win a, to win a fight. <laughs> so that's what's going to happen and that'll be a Saturday on the Plus, not on the Linear Network. Moving on to news and notes, the WBA has ordered Dimitri Bivol, their light heavyweight champion to take on Gilberto Zerdo Ramirez. Also some reports, mm. uh Chris Eubank taking on Connor Ben in an old rivalry going back to the UK back wow. in the 90s and August 27th ESPN. Jose Pedraza will take on Richard Comey. Mario Bivol against Zerdo, sign me up. I said I was excited for that. He happened to be uh sitting uh, next to me at the fight. Um, this past weekend, well, for a while, then he moved around and all that. But you know, we frequent his brick house, or I frequent his brick house boxing club um, often, and he was excited. He looks big, man. I can't even believe he well, makes that. No, no, class. he doesn't look big. He, he is, is big. big. He is big. But I'm saying, pardon me, he looks big for uh, 175. Like I'm like, wow, this dude looks like a heavyweight when you see him in person. He really is, and I think that might be a factor, along with his southpaw stance and his fluidity. Julian Chua, we've talked about, I think, is really bringing him along nicely. That's a good fight. I'm excited about that fight. I want to be at that fight. Yeah, let's hope it happens. The goal in terms of making that fight, I spoke to both parties on both sides. Um, they want to have it by October or November. Great. There's a great chance of it landing in L.A. I would love for Even that. better. The soccer stadium, the bank, would be perfect. Oh, my God. Wouldn't, don't okay, you think? I'm getting excited. Yes, and both <laughs> sides have expressed an interest in wanting to make a deal. They think, look, they are talking about this fight eight, nine months ago because they kind of needed each other. Based on what has happened, I think this fight is exponentially bigger. Yes. I No, this is a huge fight, and I think it's smart if it's in L.A., obviously, with Zordo um, right here. And uh, it's huge opportunity for both of them to take their star to the next level. So you don't see any issues in it. No, I don't. That's what the I'm WBA saying. The has ordered it. You need the belt. Wow. Fight. I'm so excited. Uh, that, that's great. And, that's Mario, great if you if find this that. strange, Chris Eubank is a middleweight contender. Conor Ben is an aspiring welterweight. Are we are we just not doing weight classes anymore? Are we just <laughs> saying move. the fact? Hey, the fathers are fighting. They fought. You guys, I I don't understand this Marketing. fight, Marketing. but it may be a fun fight after all. All right, when we come back, we talk to Sinicia Estrada, who joins us in studio, talk about her future and her career. All coming up on the three knockdown rule on Triller, and we're back on the three knockdown rule on Triller. And Mario, we we brought on someone very special, someone that. Beat the piss out of you a couple weeks ago at Brickhouse. Why don't you watch your language I around mean, when she, we have she ladies gave you right a here? Great well, that to was see. a fun sparring session, and <laughs> I, you know, it's not my first time I've gotten my ass kicked by a woman. Probably won't be the last. <laughs> but of course, uh, world champ Sinicia Estrada. Thank you so much for coming. That was fun. Thank you. It was fun. He's. 
he's pretty damn skilled. Oh, yeah. thank you, sweetie. Yeah. Don't just be saying that because I'm right here across no, from you. No, 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 you really are. Oh, yeah. thank you. You're sweet. For an old guy. <laughs> so hang in there. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. So, Sunish, I don't know what you could tell us, but there were some reports this past weekend about your future. What can you actually tell us right now? Um, I will be back in the ring soon, definitely before the year ends, and um, some exciting news about my future. So. Wow, she should go into politics. Very, that was really good. Very coy. Very can, coy. Yeah. Can, can I ask you this? Is is it some? Is it something that, um, as far as uh, the future is concerned, um, something that you wanted to happen? It just sort of presented itself, or um, what? What can you say about it other than you'll be back in the ring? Uh, I can't really say anything. <laughs> you can't really say anything for like legal or legal reasons. <laughs> Yeah. Is, is, is that right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Well, as, okay. As far as the next time we'll see you in the ring, yeah. um, is has there been talk about a date or an opponent or? Um, within the next couple months, I'll be I'll be back in the ring. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Pa- I, I mean, I just I just want to get back in there. I'll probably do a title defense next, and then start to to unify. I mean, I've been wanting to unify. I was hoping to uni- start unifi- start getting unification fights earlier this year, but unfortunately, uh, there was a hold on that. But I'm ready to. So unify. Nancy, I couldn't help yes. but. Uh, here we go. I couldn't help but <laughs> notice we you're wearing a Fierce King jacket. The Fierce King being Ryan Garcia. Now, you were actually part oh. of the Zone broadcast. That is a nice jacket, I will say that. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Nice job on that. I was yeah. I was there having Your cocktails. Your thoughts from a fighter's <laughs> perspective on Ryan's performance on Saturday night. Yeah. Yeah. What would you think? It was exactly what I expected. Um, I knew he would go in there and stop for tuna. I said... I predicted before the fight, I said he'll stop him in the late rounds. It was a six round, so it wasn't really the late round. I actually round. called the six round. And I, I didn't said, give myself um, a pat on the back on that one. Right oh, nice. <laughs> I'm totally nice. lucky. You should have bet on it. I know, <laughs> I bet I on the six round. Um, and uh, I said that Ryan needs to go to the body because Fortuna is a little soft to the body. Um, I mean, of course, there is some guys who are soft to the body and who, who could take a good body shot, but I, I knew Fortuna couldn't take his body shot. So when, he, when Ryan landed that beautiful hook to the body, I... I wasn't surprised. How you, do you, you know what? Wait, before you, you're right, Sinise. I shouldn't have brought that up um, earlier too, because he did, he knocked um, down Luke Campbell the same way. Mm-hmm. He's got he kind of faints that jab and he does a quick body mm-hmm. shot, especially against southpaws. Yes, yeah. and it works against uh, mm-hmm. exactly. Well, so, with that said, another southpaw is Tank Davis. How do you see him matching yeah. up? You know, I think Ryan has the potential to be the best in that weight division, but I still would like to see some little corrections from him you know he's still young and he's still um i think there's still uh, a bit of mistakes as far as him pulling straight back and i would like to see him for for a tall athletic guy i would like to see him use his feet better because he has the he's great on his athleticism. Heels a lot he's on his heels like he digs his heel now is that because yeah. he's trying to catch you with that front side hook do you think that's specifically why he like, wants to be planted right off the bat? The check hook he wants, yeah. yeah, he likes to twitch off of it. Yeah, yeah, I think because he's he's used to throwing that shot, um, and I know, you know, he's had problems with his right hand, but it's getting better. So I would like to see him just um, use use his defense a little bit better, especially when you when you're going to start facing guys like Tank. Um, maybe roll with punches, dip under punches instead of just pulling straight back. And I know he said he he expected Fortuna to throw that looping shot that Campbell um, dropped him with, which um, that's good that he sees that now and he knows people are going to want to throw that shot because he's vulnerable for it. So hopefully he just continues to correct that. And I think, um, um, you know, he has the potential to be the best. How excited are you by the announcements and what has taken place with women's boxing in 2022. Did you ever think it'd get to this place this soon? I started boxing when I was eight years old. I knew that I wanted to box when I was like six years old. So when I was six years old, I had said to myself, I'm going to sign with the biggest promoter in boxing. I'm going to be a world champion. and I'm going to fight on TV. I said that when women's boxing wasn't even on TV or wasn't even heard of. It really exist. So I, I knew this time would come. I just didn't know when and it's here and it's it's happened within the past two years and i've been boxing for freaking 20 was taylor years. serrano special to you oh it was so special it was so emotional like me, you were there you I were there was, by I the was way there with michaela my mom and dad Ginny. loved that fight yeah <laughs> yeah i was there with michaela jenny christina cruz was sitting right next to me and me and christina like i'll never forget this all we kept doing was looking at, the, at each other and saying this is crazy this is crazy because it was the atmosphere was insane you would have thought it was a freaking canelo fight do you think they would have been different had they been 
three minute rounds would the intensity have been had, so i believe did, yes i believe at um at the, one of the press conferences leading up to the fight um serrano suggested three minute rounds and katie was like no nah, i'm good with two minute rounds which is <laughs> smart on katie because yeah. katie's style yeah. she needs two minute rounds and serrano likes to you know uh she has that power and she wants to really take her time yeah and she did hurt katie in the beginning so i think if it was three minute rounds it would have been an advantage for serrano mm -hmm. and katie knew that so Hmm. Big night coming up for women's boxing, September 10th, doubleheader, Savannah Marshall against Clarissa Shields, and then uh, the greatest Twitter war I've seen, Alicia Baumgartner and Michaela Mayer <laughs> are just battling it out. Your wow. thoughts on those two fights? Yeah, that's going to be great. Um, both on the same card. That's going to be awesome. Um, I wish it was here, but... Uh... Oh, well, you have a you passport. Can. You can fly. Yeah. You're yeah. making the big money now. <laughs> but uh, I think that's going to be great. Um, Alicia's known to be a power puncher, and Michaela has that amateur experience so mm. she can box very well but in her in Michaela's last fight she showed that she could bang and find the inside too so it's going to be a good one yeah that's it, great it's great that um like Kim mentioned that women's boxing seems to really be uh trending on the on the upside in the right direction a lot of um uh, ladies like yourself get to get uh highlighted how tough is this but because you're uh You've been in the sport a while. It obviously is, uh, consumes a lot of your time because the preparation's uh, real tough. How much of a monkey wrench is it throwing your social life? You got anyone special in your life? Is that hard to balance? Well, that's pretty personal there, Lopez. Well, that's a legit question because it's tough. It's something you got to think about. I know you don't think about it, Kim. Other people usually think about that. <laughs> Kim likes to stay curled up with a good book. <laughs> Among not, other things. Not me. I need some loving. So um, how, does, that throw, does that even enter into your mind? or You got a boyfriend? What's up? Oh, my God. Lopez. Jeez. Hey, I'm, I'm talking to her. Shut up. What's I up? got time for all that. Yeah. You ain't got time for all Good that? Answer. Good answer. No. I'm in the gym like 15 hours a day. I know, and there's a lot of dudes in there. I'm sure they try to stay. Dude, what do you tell them? <laughs> Back off or no? Would you, do you, is it easier someone in the business or without? I would I would n never date a fighter now. I would want to date someone who's who has a totally different career. Mm, just because totally different career. I'm around it all the time, yeah. so I don't want to continue to talk about it. When exactly. I'm, when I go home or when I'm right. you know, on the weekends or whatever. Yeah. Sunisi, I know it's hard for women's boxing, especially when you, Damn, you started out. You moved on out. too quick, Kim. I was oh. going to ask what kind, <laughs> what kind of dude she wants. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. interested. We have limited time I know, here. but people would like I mean, Sunisi. Nice She's known for her, time for her appealing quality as well yeah. as her fighting style. So I was going to say, what kind of guys does she like? Where These are the kind of things people want to know, Kim. I got you, Sunisi. Don't worry. I know he's trying to trap you. I'm not trying to trap her. I'm trying to hook her up. Call me 911. I got Got you. Yeah. So I remember uh, talking to JC, Jerry Casper as your manager, Can when you were starting off, off, that there was a time you had to take fights wherever you could get them, and the money wasn't great. What's the greatest sacrifice you've ever had just to get your career going early on? Well, evidently, it's giving up dudes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be number one sacrifice, but she never actually aside said that. from that, she never easy. actually said that. <laughs> I do like dudes. Just yeah, okay, just good, good. Yeah. I'm glad you stepped for you. <laughs> but for a minute there, I thought Kim was having your back. I was like, oh, damn, maybe she don't like dudes. Okay, <laughs> Which, by the way, that's cool, too. I'm just saying. All right, I'm going to shut up. So, you see, I just want to apologize for Mario Lopez here. I'm, I'm want... trying to hook Sinesia up. You'll be here cock blocking. Okay. Go on. All right, Sinesia, on that note, has to take a call, Kim. See, you wasted all this time. Uh, yeah, I got, I got to take a call, but um, <laughs> <laughs> it's getting hot in here. <laughs> hey, you're going to have to come back when you can really talk about that news then, okay? <laughs> about what? About, the about, no, the news. Don't talk about, see, now you want to talk about dudes. See, I know you did. I know I can see it in your eyes. <laughs> I know. See, Literally, I dudes, I news, whatever. Dude, yeah. Dudes, news, whatever you got want to talk about at all. I know you got to take that call, who's probably from a dude. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> come back, Sinicia. I will, I will. All right. You all know right. I love me some Estrada. Kim, <laughs> come on, keep up next time. All right, bro. well, we want to thank Miss Estrada. You'll be back. We could talk more about your future and present. Anyway, we'll be back when we return. We'll talk about the Ask Mario segment and Final Flurries, the three knockdown rule on Triller. And we're back on the three knockdown rule. We'll go to the Ask Mario segment of this program. Here's one from E. Man, um, is BAM the future of boxing? Well, you know that we're both huge uh, fans of BAM, and I think uh, he, he's fighter of the year so far for me. And if he continues to fight, he should nail that down. Um, the only reason I'm kind of hesitating to say yes right away is because he's so light, right? Size and, matters. And it does, and, and I'm sorry. But if he can string... Uh, a few more impressive performance like, uh, performances like that against the likes of like an Estrada 
and um, Chocolatito. Chocolatito. Well, you know, th- and then I hope I'm wrong because he definitely would deserve it. I believe he'll be one of the pillars of the sport, and if not one of these pay-per-view stars, he's one of those guys, every time he fights, you mark off the calendar, mm. you stay home, he becomes must-see TV. Here's a very interesting question from Clay Stevenson. Hey, Mario, I believe Ryan Garcia versus Jose Ramirez could be intriguing at 140 next year. How do you like that fight? By the way, Jose Ramirez looks like he will not be fighting Zapata. So Zapata I was excited will be, for that fight. will be fighting another contender for that vacant WBC title. I he, think Ramirez is way too that's way too soon for him. Um Ramirez, I was hearing that he may also move up. I know he struggles and kills himself to make 140. And uh, next year, maybe end of next year, but I think that's a little too much too soon right now. He that was his first fight at 140. He wasn't even against a, a legit Junior Walter. I just wonder about the pilot light in terms of the passion for the sport that Ramirez has. It's been around a while, a little long in the tooth. Exactly. I I still get the sense in terms of the trajectory of career. That favors Ryan Garcia. Mm -hmm. It does. Here's one from the only Sanch. Ask that Jill Biden breakfast taco, Mario Lopez. (laughs) Who would win in the battle of hype jobs? I like that guy. Who is that guy? Who would win? It's the only Sanch. Who would win in the battle of the hype jobs, Tank or Ryan Garcia? And is this fight big enough for cross network partnership because that is an issue. If they can do sort of a mini version of what they did with Pacquiao Mayweather, because obviously they're not their star is not at that level, but if they can somehow figure that out and use that as somewhat of a blueprint, it's I don't know if it's easier or more difficult with a streaming service. You would imagine a little easier because of there'd be a little bit more flexibility, but I don't know that answer. But I think it's definitely worth trying to work out. Keep this in mind. Uh, a few months ago, Oscar De La Hoya put the kibosh on the Mungia Charlo fight because he said, I need my partner, the zone involved, and Showtime, they said in Russian, Nyet. Well, it would be then that's so, on Showtime because you can't just dismiss one of them. They have have too much of a vested interest. Well, yeah. You have to learn how to work together. And if you're the zone and you've done the last – Four or five years of a young man's career and throwing millions of dollars. I mean, they paid him $2 million this past weekend. Um, You're not letting him just go scot-free across the street. The business does not work that way, unfortunately. Here's one from Ignacio Ortiz. Are you surprised that Jermel Charlo versus Tim Zhu won't happen until next year? And did you see where Danny Garcia believes he's a Hall of Famer already? How would you guys assess his career, and is he delusional? Um, Yeah, it's unfortunate Charlo and Zhu. That's uh, terrible. That, you know, Charles become a once a year fighter that, the last three that's years. Awful. That's awful. That, I mean, that's it, it's awful because how is he surviving and how is he continuing? Well, he makes to, him good money. Nevertheless, but he'll he never be a, a star. He'll never be a star. He'll, he'll, be a be, star. he'll make a lot more. We ever heard someone say, "Oh, that's enough money." You don't ever hear and that. And if you're Tim Zhu, you're a young fighter. Last thing you need to be a sidelined. Exactly. So no, that's just that's just terrible because we want to see that right away. Danny Garcia, I I in, I don't feel at this point he's. Um, Hall of Fame material. Do you disagree? Hall of very good. Yes. Unified champion at 140. Had some really good wins. Amir Khan, very Lucas good. Matisse. Won a belt at 47. The problem is the second half of his career, great Larry Merchant saying, there's no there, there. If he can Just somehow rejuvenate and have a um, come back strong in this later half, well, then perhaps. Yes, but going to 54, I, I think there's a threshold. Don't no, think that's a great No, move. I agree. But if he, for some reason, yeah. is able to... Capture a title or something? Well, then, then, okay. we can revisit then we can revisit it. it. Right now, point. he's the Hall of Very Good and Hall Productive. Very good. Here's a question from Sherm as we wrap it up here. Should we temper our expectation for Usyk and Loma's upcoming fights? I don't think the circumstances they have been in living in the past few months are ideal for a professional athlete. That's a very cogent point. It is. Ooh, good word. Thank cogent. You. Yeah, I went to Montebello High School, Harvard um, East LA. Those guys are pros, though, and with vast experience they know how to prepare themselves that is a concern but i don't think too big of one i think they're going to be just fine vasil lomachenko will be returning in the fall uh kevin ioli reported that todd the buff said he will be returning here's some other news not i don't think it's bad news but it's a buzzkill george cambosis is going to enforce his rematch clause expect him to fight devin haney uh in october so yes we are going to have mm. geely the sequel he i mean the, that, that, that's a rematch nobody Saturday wants too, devin haney i know well devin does <laughs> yeah. He's going to get a nice payday and, and, and probably uh, uh, will end up with the same result, assuming he prepares the same way and stuff. You know, we'll see what Cambosis can somehow um, change. He better style, be willing to fight. He's got to he be willing to He needs to get... fight in a manner where he's literally going to say, 
I'm going to risk getting knocked out. Right. Because if he's going to play it safe on his back foot and try to time uh, Haney with happen. the perfect counterpunch, that's like catching uh, chopsticks with a fly with the chopsticks, and only Daniel Russo did that in Karate Kid 1. I've never actually seen anyone else do it. Mm-mm. So you've got to be able to fight a boxer. You can't box with Devin Haney. Exactly. Uh, looking at final floor, he's Mario, very nice T-shirt. All-Star Games at Chavez Ravine this week. You're not going? You have tickets. What's going on? I know I'm not going, and it's it's uh, God. You put me in a bad mood now. No, I got to work. Thanks. I got to work Thanks. late, and I got to do some stuff. But um, I'm excited that it is finally here on uh, in LA. More excited that the Dodgers are, have a 10 game lead. You think you think they uh, you think they do it this year? I hope you, not. But anyway, you know you know what? You're such a hater. I really am. You really are. You're the so, la- you're when so was the last LA Dodgers All Star game? Save me a little trivia question. It's one of the first ones I ever watched. Oh, gosh, I can't remember when. It was in 1980, and the MVP of that game was Ken Griffey Sr. Wow. Hit a home run. How old are you? <laughs> almost, as, almost. Yeah. We're about the same age, yeah. but I was a huge baseball fan. I, was a big, I never yeah. thought it would take. Remember, didn't the Dodgers, weren't they scheduled to host the All-Star yes, game during the ago. COVID Correct. year, that's right? Why, that's why we got it back. So, exactly. Mari, how is the offer? You've been watching that about the uh, Godfather. You know, I didn't think about the making of a movie was going to be interesting. It is great. I really, really like it. I've only got a couple episodes left, but it is fantastic. The actors are doing a great job, and they actually look like the characters. It makes It's almost more interesting than The Godfather itself. Hmm. It's on Paramount+, Plus, which is slowly becoming one of my favorite uh, streaming services. Hmm. It's really, really good, dude. If you've got to step it up and start getting some of these things, I'm telling you, you're missing a lot of quality television. After that, I'm doing... Um, what's I got my list. I already showed you my list, right? No. Did I show you? I showed you my list. Hold on. Where's my list? This is riveting stuff here. Hold on. This is riveting. I gave you my list already. I can't believe I can't find it right now. I don't want to waste any more time. But I know I've got, oh, Under the Banner of God. And then I've got Better Call Saul because that's coming up in its final season and the latest season of Peaky Blinders. And then I'm hearing a lot about a show called The Bear on Hulu. It's supposed hmm. to be really good. Yeah. One last note. A Saturday <laughs> night. <laughs> Well, one of my favorite places to go at LA Live is Tom's Watch Bar, which is like a Las Vegas sports book. It's where the old ESPN zone is. Mario, I don't get this. On a Saturday night after the fights, I'm hanging out with uh, Jim Boone, Doug Fisher, a couple of other fight people. Yeah. And all of a sudden, at 10 o'clock, they go, last call for alcohol. Mario, 10 o'clock? This is LA, and we're at LA Live after a night of fights. And they're calling last call at 10. You need to hang in West Hollywood. They just upped no, it to it, 4 in the morning. Well, we could walk, but it's not across the street from the Staples Center. No, it's not, but I'm saying you got time if it goes to 4 in the morning. Yeah. Plus, those are all your peeps. So you should go down to WeHo, yeah. kick it, and yeah, you're there right. till 4. Another, like another, another, right another, there. another thing that was very shocking, the inflation. Remember those hot dogs that they sell outside the Staples Center? Yeah, of course. They're from your corner. people? They're, they're now $8. They're not just 5 my people. What happened to 6 or 7 so I mean, they're still good, but at eight dollars, a little pricey. Eight dollars hot dog. It's now eight dollars. Right? Dang. Whoa! They got a Mastro's across the street now too. Yeah, but they don't that get nice. the hot dogs like that. No, you quick, get the hot dogs right like there. That. All right. Well, that's it for this week's edition of the Three Knockdown. We'd like to thank Sinistra Estrada for coming in, and I would like to apologize to her on Mario Lopez. What are you behalf. talking about? I'm trying to hook her up, dude. You're a fool. <laughs> anyway, on behalf of Mario Lopez, Smoking Tim Fraser, Justin Buffalo Knuckles, and Tino on the edits. Goodbye, everybody.